if um, there are a couple scenarios, but if a, if a family lives in what we call an attendance area, and let's suppose it's um, uh, on Beverly Road and close to Hunsaker Street, then they would go to Watson Elementary School if they have an elementary school age child. Or they can go to West Fairmont Middle School or Fairmont Senior High School. What they need to take with them when they enroll their child, regardless of the grade level, if they've not been in the school before, in the school system, they need to bring the child's um, certificate of live birth, and that's the one that was issued from the Department of Vital Statistics, not the hospital and not the courthouse. And if they don't have it, if they've misplaced it, as a lot of us are, are prone to do, it can be ordered. At the um, schools, at the county's website, it's um, mcboe.com. If you look in the upper right section, there's a word that says departments. And when you click on that, it drops down a menu and you'll see a department there called CTNI or Curriculum Technology and Instruction. And you would click on that. Then on the left, you'll see all of those departments. And one, and one of them on the left is Kindergarten. It's a yellow section. When you click on that, it shows you the address, uh, a copy of the form you can print out and send in to Charleston with a check for $12. And then they'll send you the copy that is valid for enrolling children in school. So that's a biggie. The other thing besides the birth certificate is the social security number. They don't have to have the card, just the child's number. No, we have a social security number, we have the birth certificate, the immunization records, the other is a utility bill, like telephone, gas, electric, water, trash, that shows where they physically reside. So that brings us back to what I started with when I said um, where a child attends determines what school they will go to. Um, in the Locust Avenue area is one of those areas where a child, uh, they, they ask, well, will they go to Watson or will they attend JN? And the only way to answer that is for them to contact one of two persons who have an attendance area map. One of them is Trina Brown, who is a secretary, secretary at the Board of Education. And the other one is Ron Schmook at the Transportation Department. And they can tell them, based on their physical address, which school they'll attend. So uh, the, the last article that they bring with them, if they have it, if they qualify and if they have it, is a Medicaid or Medicare card. So those would be the items. Now, and they can attend, they can bring their child and the child can attend while they're being enrolled if they would like. Or they can, the parents can just go without the child, but they should call ahead to the school to make sure somebody is going to be there to enroll them. And um, it would probably help the child feel more comfortable if they got to see the school before school started. Well, there are a number of things that, that can be done. One is to, starting now, if they haven't already, establish a bedtime and a wake-up time. That would be approximate to, to getting ready for the bus and a bedtime that would be a, become a routine once school starts. If the child's within walking distance, they may want to walk with the child each day so that that becomes a very familiar route. And um, 
it would lessen the anxiety. If they can, usually two days before school starts, and this year it'll start on Thursday, um, they could call the school, go visit, and find out where the library is and the bathroom and the uh, where they have recess, the cafeteria, the those those kinds of things to orient the child do a lot to reduce the anxiety. Uh, another thing they can do is find a corner in the house where everything but goes. So maybe this corner is designated for the backpack and the lunch. So the parent makes part of their routine to get up in time to pack a lunch or maybe even do that the night before and put it in the refrigerator. When the child comes home in the afternoon, the backpack is opened and they look at any papers that have to be read and the backpack is kept in that corner. Little things like that make a big difference when it comes to the early morning helter-skelter, okay? So those, those are two things or three things that can be really good in order to cut down on what we would call mental overhead. The other thing is to have the child's clothes ready the night before, if it means picking out their outfit. That way there's no argument or discussions over what shirt I'm going to wear, especially as they get into adolescence. Uh, that becomes a real issue. So they lay all of that out the night before. When they wake up, they do what they have to do, get dressed, and they're on their way.